Chapter 27, The Creation of Time. God, in the bodies of 1 billion, 8 million people, physically lives on the first earth, but his and her mind fill space all around to set the boundaries of the new universe. For the first trillion years that the original gods live on the first earth, there is no time. They know only in retrospect that the period of timelessness lasts for a trillion years because that is how long it takes for each subsequent star to form. And they all form the same way as the first solar system, except for the first earth. During this early stage, the first earth is alone in absolute darkness. This darkness is called ether or space in modern words. It surrounds the first earth up to a distance of nearly 1 million miles beyond which there is nothing. There are no physical substances beyond the boundaries of the universe. No physical bodies can go there. That region is occupied only by the mind which has yet to condense into the seven substances. The first earth is totally still and dark. This absence of movement is the reason for the absence of time. Time comes into being the moment the earth starts to spin on its axis in orbit around the sun. The sun is the generator of time, but at this beginning period, it has not yet been created, and so time does not yet exist. During this timeless period, the gods measure time by measuring duration. They set their appointments with each other by determining the duration of their activities. Since every person is united with every other person, they all know what all are doing and how long it takes. Therefore, when they set appointment, they say, I'll meet you at the end of such and such an activity, and then meet when the duration of that activity has come to an end. This type of time measurement by duration is used in the eternal state of mind of the elders in the future as well, where there is also no time. Although the gods are involved in many earthly activities, their main activities involve the condensation of the expanded part of their mind into the seven substances, which will ultimately form the first sun and subsequent star systems that will eventually fill the entire universe. They take turns in the creative activity in groups of 144,000 people or 72,000 couples. At important junctures in the creation, all 1 billion, 8 million gods work together. They create the universe by meditation. They bring the plan for each star system from its original place in eternity in their united minds where all things past, present, and future exist in perfection. They concentrate their minds on the type of sun that they want to create and hold its image steady in their united minds. After meditating on the image for some time, that part of their expanded mind will begin to condense into the chosen location. The first substance of the sun will begin to condense as magnetism. It takes a period of 6,000 years of meditation to initiate the formation of one solar system. The gods divide this time among the 7,000 groups of 144,000 people. Each group meditates on the creation for a set period whose length is determined by their progress. The creation of the sun advances in very precise stages and the duration of these stages is their way of measuring time. After 6,000 years of creative activity, they rest for a thousand years before starting the creation of the next star system. The creation of stars is sequential for the most part, meaning one star system is created at a time. Simultaneously with the sequential creation, the gods are involved in a larger process of prearranging the placement of each system. They determine beforehand where the location of each star will be, what its movements will be, as well as its magnetic relationship with the rest of the universe. By magnetic relationship, I mean what modern scientists call gravitational relationships. In reality, gravity does not exist. What they call gravity on Earth is mostly atmospheric pressure. On a larger scale out in space, gravitational attraction is actually magnetic attraction. And so every 7,000 years, the gods begin the creation of a new star system. 
This creative process continues even today and will continue until the entire universe is filled with its allocated number of star systems. It takes a trillion years for the first star system to be completed and about the same amount of time for each subsequent system to reach completion. But the actual creative process of initiating the formation of each system only takes 6,000 years. After 6,000 years of continuous meditation with the 7,000 groups relieving each other, all the necessary conditions are set in place for the star system to reach completion automatically. In other words, once the initial process is completed in the 6,000 year period, the rest of the process follows natural laws. If there is an Earth-like planet in that star system, it will be ready for habitation in about 1 trillion years. Thus, the second Earth is inhabited by settlers sent from the first Earth after one trillion years. After that, a new Earth is inhabited every 7,000 years. <laughs>